guys this is chef dina academy welcome back to this channel in today's video we are going to be looking at the design for share reinforcement based on the euro code the share reinforcement is regarded as the vertical reinforcement in beam that is provided mainly to resist against chef stresses in this on the beam Another purpose of shear reinforcement is to put in place the longitudinal reinforcement. The longitudinal reinforcement are the reinforcement provided against the bending moment in this on the beam. So these shear reinforcement are also referred to as the shear links or you can also call them the stair ups. So to design shear in beams, let us look at a typical diagram. This diagram is given in clause 6.2 of the code. In order to explain the euro code approach to shear checks in beam, the euro code introduces a method called the strut inclination method. This method is to assume an inclination axis or an inclination plane in which the angle between this inclination plane or the compression strut and the beam axis is said to be theta. And then in order for this beam to be adequate in shear, we have to limit the value of this beam between theta equals to 21.8 degree and theta equals to 45 degree. So that means the theta is the angle of strut, which is the angle between this imaginary compressive strut line and the beam axis. You can see from the diagram that the vertical reinforcement are the shear reinforcement, while the horizontal reinforcement are the longitudinal reinforcement, which are in tension. So the value of this theta must always be between cot theta equals to 2.5 and cot theta equals to 1. So when cot theta is equals to 2.5, that is the minimum allowable angle. But when cot theta equals to 1, that's the maximum allowable angle we are going to understand this more when we continue in the video but before we continue if this is your first time on this channel kindly hit the subscribe button turn on the notification you can even share this video with your friend i'm sure they will learn one or two things from it so based on this let us look at the general procedure of designing shear reinforcement in beams so the first thing you have to do is to determine your design shear stress. Your design shear stress is a factor of the shear force on the beam. So this is given by the shear force divided by BW over Z. BW is just given as the width of the, of the beam. In case of a rectangular beam, it's just going to be the width of the beam. But in case of a flange beam, it is going to be the width of the web of the beam then the z is the lever arm when the lever arm is not known is given as 0 0.9 multiplied by the effective depth of the beam then after we determine the shear the design shear stress you now determine the concrete strut capacity you know i already told you that the value of cot theta is between 2.5 and 1 so you determine the concrete strut capacity which is vrd when theta is at its minimum allowable value which is when cot theta equals to 2.5 so when this value is now less than your design shear stress so that means the shear stress induced on the beam is much more lesser compared to what the beam can take so in that case you can design with the minimum the minimum means when cot theta equals to 2.5 so in the formula for area of shear reinforcement that we have below what you just have to do is where you have cot theta you substitute 2.5 which is the minimum but in case when your VR, VED is less than your concrete strut capacity, which is VRD, then you now have to check, is this VED also less than the maximum angle of theta your beam can take? And the maximum angle of theta your beam can take is when cot theta equals to 1. So when you now compare that your VED is less than this maximum value, then the next thing you have to do is you now determine what is the exact value of that theta. So to determine the exact value of the theta, you make use of this formula inside this box here. 
but in case when your VED is now greater than the maximum angle of theta the beam can take, then you have to redesign the section. So that is just the meaning. Redesigning the section in case of shear reinforcement is you can either increase the size of the beam that is in this case you are going for the depth of the beam you increase the depth of the beam in any of the conditions in which your ved falls into you now determine your area of shear reinforcement from there you determine the spacing and you should make sure that your spacing must always be less than the maximum spacing the maximum spacing for shares vertical shear reinforcement is 0 0.5 multiplied by the effective depth of the beam so let us take a couple of examples in order to understand this design process so let us look at this design question design a beam for shear subjected to a shear force of 250 kN using the design parameters below the design parameters are what you need in order to carry out design so the first thing in the design parameters is fck which is the compressive strength of concrete is given as 20 megapascal or newton per millimeter square the fyk or fywk in terms of shear reinforcement the euro code provide fywk which is also 410 bw is 230 h is 450 you can get your effective depth from here then your z is 357 millimeters this is actually gotten from one of the videos i've released on design of beam you can check out that video i will leave the link to the design of beam so that you can check how you can design for the longitudinal reinforcement in beams so once you de determine your design parameters the first step now is to determine your design shear stress and now check for the value of your vrd when quartita equals 2.5 as well as VRD maximum where quarter tie equals to one. So to to check for the design shear stress is just given as the shear force divided by BW over Z. So substituting shear force of 250, you have to convert it to Newton. So that's why we multiply by 10 power 3. They divide by BW over Z. At the end of the day, you have 3.04 Newton per millimeter square. So the next thing is to determine your VRD maximum. The value of VRD maximum is given by this. All you just have to do is to substitute the value of theta, whatever theta you want to get. So when theta is equals to, when theta is equals to 2.5, that is when theta equals to 21.8. That means your VRD maximum is given as 24, 2.54 Newton per millimeter square then the second value of theta you know i said the value of theta is limited to between 2.5 and 1 when theta equals 2.5 or when theta equals to 1 so when theta equals to 1 substituting that inside this formula you are going to have 3.68 newton per millimeter square don't worry i'm going to leave the this presentation in the description of this video you can download this this slide there so there are three conditions in which your vrd and your ved must satisfy the first condition is when your ved is less than when this value is less than this value when the value here is less than this value when this is less than this so when this is less than this that means the the design shear stress on the beam is less than the maximum shear stress the beam can sustain your vrd by definition is the design value of the maximum shear stress which the concrete or the beam can sustain limit limited by crushing of the compression struts so that is just the definition so when this your vrd is less than your vd your design stress so that means all you have to do is you take the value of theta to be equals to 21.8 you take the value of theta to be equals to 21.8 but the second case when your v 
RD maximum cos theta equal to 2.5 is less than your VED, which is also less than the V RD maximum when cos theta equals to 1. That is, this value is, le is less than this, and this is less than this. This is less than this, and this is less than this. So that is what they are trying to say. This is less than this. This is less than this. So when that falls into the second criteria, that means all you have to do is, you now have to determine the value of theta using the next step. But when your VRD falls in the third condition, when your VED, which is this guy, is greater than this value, so that means your beam fail in shear. All you have to do in that case is to redesign your section. I've already explained what redesigning means. That means your theta in this case is greater than 45 degrees. And I've already told you that based on this strut inclination method, the value of theta must always be between 21.8 and 45 degrees. So that means if your theta falls in the first condition, the design is okay. The second condition, the design is okay. But the third condition, that means your beam fail in shear. So based on our own scenario, you can see that the value of VED is between 2.54 and 3.68. Therefore, it falls in the second criteria. So what we have to do is to now determine the value of theta that will give us this design shear stress. So to do that, that is when we now come to step two, determine the value of theta. This is our straightforward. The value of theta is given by this VED. We already know VED. We know FYK, which is the concrete strength. Substituting that, you have theta is equal to 27.85. You can now see that your theta is now between 21.8 and 45 degrees. So once we've now determined the value of theta, the next thing is to now determine the area of shear reinforcement. This is very simple and straightforward. The area of shear reinforcement is given by this. We already know the value of theta, we know Fy, we know V, we know B. So we can substitute adequately. So at the end of the day, we are going to end up with area of shear reinforcement divided by spacing. S is, is the spacing must be equal to 0.9. So all we have to do is, theoretically, we can determine any area of a reinforcement if we know the size. The reinforcement have a circular cross section. So in that case, we can use area of a circle to determine the cross sectional area of the reinforcement. So if we assume a 10 mm size reinforcement, we are going to end up with area of 78.5. But the reason why we are multiplying the area by 2 is because we are using a two-leg shear links. I'm going to be explaining why a two-leg shear links. Because in beam, the shear link that is common in beam is either a one-leg or a two-leg. So since we are assuming a two-leg shear links, we multiply the area by 2. So at the end of the day, we have 157 millimeters. So this is the required area. And when we are designing for shear, what we are looking for is the size of the reinforcement and the spacing. So what we have to do now is to now determine what spacing can you divide by this area. You know, this formula is area divided by spacing. What spacing can you divide by the, can you use to divide the area to give you a value slightly less than 0 0.5? So let's assume a spacing of 115. With a spacing of 150, we have 1.05 which is slightly greater than 0 0.9. So therefore, a spacing of 150 is a safe design. I hope you understand. So now we can say that we are providing a shear reinforcement of size 10 mm. But before we now go to the end part of this course, if you've not subscribed to this channel, kindly use this opportunity to do that. So this is the reason why we are providing a two leg. Because when whenever you have a beam, a beam is comprised of the origin, the longitudinal reinforcement and also the vertical reinforcement. The vertical reinforcement is the links. So if your beam is rectangular in shape most of the time, that is what we have. So what we use most of the time is two legs because these are the leg of the beam. We have one leg, second leg. So that's why it's two legs. But when the size of your beam is so small, in such a way that you cannot provide two legs, 
that is when you can now have one leg reinforcement so in that case if your reinforcement or share links is one leg you don't have to multiply by two all you have to do is multiply by one i hope that is clear so at the end of the day you provide a share reinforcement of size 10 mm at a spacing of 200 so that is the three step in which you can use to design for your share reinforcement thank you see you in the next class